Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with uh, custom stock models inside of Top Solid Cam 7. To begin with, I'm going to start by importing the parts from my customer. There's two ways to do this. One is I can just right mouse button click on my project folder here and go to Import Export and choose Import File with Conversion. Let's start with that. So here I'll choose Part, and it's just a Parasolid file. I'll say Open, Validate, like that. There's my part. Nice and simple. Another way would be to drag and drop it directly out of your uh, Windows Explorer. So for example, I'll take my stock and drag and drop it right back onto here. Like that, it's saying, do you want to convert? I'm going to say yes, validate, boom, I have my stock as well. So again, there's a couple different ways to do things. But here you can see I have two separate documents. I have my part file and my stock file. Awesome. You know what, I'm going to close both because I don't need those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying I'd like to take my part and do a machine part settings document. This is the first step when using custom stock. In fact, what it wants to do here is it wants to shrink wrap a custom piece of stock, which I'm not going to let it do just yet. Instead, what I'll do is I'll take my custom stock model and include it in here. Now, in some other products, they show you fancy videos where the stock magically appears uh, directly where it's supposed to be. Well, in the real world, the part doesn't always come in positioned exactly perfectly, so I'll show you how we do it. I'm going to take that face there, and I'm going to pop it on this face right here. It's the wrong way. I'll just double click to invert. No problem. How about we take this face to here. We'll flip that as well. Oops. We'll flip this one as well. There we go. And then we'll do one more. Okay, so we'll take that to there, and that's fully defined. We're good to go. So I'll exit out of positioning, and now we'll go ahead and describe our stock. So I'll go in here. Again, you'll see the custom shrink rack block. I'll just uncheck that. I'll remove stock from there, and I'll just put it right here. And like that, in just a few minutes, not even a few seconds really, we're ready to go and machine this, and let's do that. So here we'll go to machining, and uh, in this case, actually we'll go to machining another way. I'm going to include a machining document, but in this case I'm going to use a 5-axis machine, why not? I'll use my template. This is just to show you that you can use mach uh, machine simulation on the fly as well. And now I want to take my stock part that's all ready to go and include it in here by drag and drop. And again, just position it the same way we saw when I did the stock model. I'm going to take that face and I'll put it right there. Okay. Um, I can position this around this face. Once I have it exactly where I want it, I can offset it, I can do whatever I want. I can exit out of there. Top Solid will create my zero for me and I'm ready to machine. Now, for now, I'm going to turn off that machine definition and we're going to go ahead and just machine this. Let's see how easy that is. I'm just going to right mouse button click and choose roughing. Why not? Now here, my tolerance is going to be four thousandths. Good enough for me. You know what though? We're going to leave twenty thousandths and twenty thousandths. And I'll say my maximum axial depth of cut is fifty thousandths. That's what everyone likes to take as a standard, right? Now we just need to pick a tool. I'll go grab an end mill, and we'll just go browse our library of them. Let's maybe go find a half incher. That looks good to me, and we'll say OK. Now, like that, I'm just going to say OK. Actually, one more thing. Let's go set some speeds. And, oh, good, we already have speeds and feeds. I love it when software does that for me. I'm just going to say OK. And this is just to show you again that the software is very, very fast. It's very efficient. And more importantly, and let me rotate this around so you can see, Notice that my tool automatically plunged off the part because it uses that custom stock model for more than just toolpath. It uses it to help choose the correct place to plunge the tool. So that's pretty cool. So there's our simulation. So that's pretty nice. Let's exit out of that, have a look at the toolpath. You can see that's some pretty good efficient toolpath. It's going down the custom stock, it's plunging off the model where it should plunge, and that's another benefit of custom stock. Okay, and maybe let's go ahead and uh, let's look at our feeds and speeds. So here we have our cycle times of roughly a total of 11 minutes. And that's because I'm doing 50,000 steps of cut in this. Now, before I go on and rest machine this, 
I want to go edit this toolpath and make a change. I've decided, in fact, that, you know what, maybe I'm cutting aluminum or whatever, so I can go actually pretty deep with this. So I'm going to say half inch depth of cut. But maybe I want to change my radial depth of cut. Uh, my step over is right now 75%. Maybe I want to make it 20%. Okay, that's fine. And maybe we want to turn on scallop optimization and set our minimal step here to be 50 thousandths. And this is going to do a kind of reverse roughing. Okay, we'll also pick up and machine the planar faces. <laughs> Why not? I'll say okay again. All right, so we've reduced our cycle time from 11 minutes down to four minutes and a quarter, okay? But you can see we still are finishing the part up there. And all we're doing is being a little bit smarter about our toolpath removal. Let's go ahead and run verify and take a peek at this, okay? So here you can see our part. Let's go ahead and hit uh, play down here. First of all, I'm gonna pause this so we can rotate it. You can see our tool spins, it's just for fun, but you can see more importantly that we're plunging off the stock and that's huge right let's go ahead and let this thing go ahead and start machining and it's always going to work its way in radially until it can get to the point where it's making one continuous cut let's maybe speed this up a little bit there you go so that is a super efficient tool path and now watch what's going to happen we're that half inch deep right so once we finish that it's going to do basically what I call reverse roughing where it took a pass once up in Z. Let's crank this all the way up. So now you can see this as it's going around the profile one pass at a time. Again, super efficient tool path, right? Beautiful. Let's exit out of here. And now let's uh, go have a look at something. Uh, if I zoom up on here, I'm gonna notice that, oops, whoever sent this to me didn't include the corner radiuses around here. So no big deal. I'm going to hit save here, and I'm going to go to my original part file. Yes, it's imported from the customer, but we want to make a change to it. No big deal. Let's just go here and let's make those changes. So I'll just right-click on that edge, and I'll say, you know what, I'd like a fillet. What does an eighth-inch fillet look like there? Well, that looks pretty good. Let's go do this on all of these. Here and here. Perfect. And then just for giggles, I'll hold control, drag and drop this right down to that edge, so I get an eighth-inch down at the bottom. We hit save. Notice here in our PDM that the software channels of these files need to be updated. Awesome. All I have to do is click to them. That's up to date. Click to my machining. Now you can see the design change is propagated. That's up to date. And let's just regenerate this toolpath. And like that, we're done. Toolpath is now taken into consideration those corner radiuses. Awesome. Now, from here, we can hit save, and let's go ahead and do our next toolpath. Now, I want to point something out. In Top Solid, we have the ability to update the stock model right here. However, it is just a visual. It's not required, okay? Let's show you what I mean. All I'm going to do is, let's say, make another roughing, okay? And in fact, I want the same 20 thousandths stock by 20 thousandths stock, but in this case, I'm going to change my tool, okay? I want a smaller tool. And maybe in this case, just to show you, we'll create a tool on the fly. I'm going to say, how about a, I don't know, quarter inch tool, okay? We'll say it's an inch and a half flute length. Uh, we'll say it's quarter inch back there, three inches long. And I'll say that its holder is how about three quarters in diameter. Perfect, good enough for me. We'll validate. All right, so this is the tool we're going to use. But I'm going to go down. 50 thousandths in, uh, increments. Okay? Let's just see what it comes up with. We'll validate. And here, it's going to create the tool path automatically based on where the previous tool couldn't rough. And here you're seeing that verify, or the, pardon me, the simulation right now. Very cool. Let's have a look at that. If I go here, you can see it's added the tool path, but only where the tool path was really needed. If we want to go ahead and verify all that, we can just go to verify, hit play, and if you want, let's turn our part and stock like that, and hit play again. Oops, wrong play. There we go. So here's if you want to watch the simulation. 
which of course we do, so we'll let that simulate right out. It'll just take a second. But hopefully what you're seeing here in this little video is a level of efficiency that is unmatched by anyone else on the market. You're faster to creating toolpath, you're faster to calculating toolpath, and as you can see, the toolpath is simply awesome. We're nearly done with this roughing. And then we'll go right on to the semi-finishing. Alrighty, here's the last pass with rough. Pretty cool. And now we're coming in. In just a few areas that we're leaving too much material, we're taking care of business. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you can expect with Top Solid 7 Cam, working with a modern software in a modern interface, and working really at the speed of thought. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.